Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Pinstar Plays Wingspan. So, um, I, we, we've done, we, we fought against the AI, we fought against a, a known human opponent, Winter Wolf. Now, let's go online. Let's, let's see if we can't uh, secure ourselves a, a, a uh, an opponent that'll give me a run for my money. Yeah, real time. A three player online game? Sure, I've been doing three players before. All right, looks like we have one other player, Sally. And yeah, it looks like we got one other person that joined us. So three player human, human game. This should be an interesting one. Hopefully we get some good cards. While we're waiting for Sally to pick their starting hands, so let's take a look at what's in the face up. Uh, Fruit Dove giving everyone lots of berries. This is not that bad. I mean, it's cheap. It's extra food for us. Uh, giving everyone else extra berries is obviously a downside, but berries are one of the least used food types. Um, so oftentimes they'll just get accumulating berries. Now, granted, if they just get, if they can trade in two berries for one of anything that they want. So giving them too many berries will let them accelerate their playing. Uh, plus, not to mention if they have birds that actually require berries or birds that require one of anything or abilities that, that consume food and turn them into points. So we need to be mindful of that. Eastern Imperial Eagle is a point bomb. Uh, you need to have a lot of card generation to make this work, but it's pretty good. I don't know if it's good enough to go lunging for. Red-legged Partridge is also good, but so expensive for the early game. These are these two are like strong early mid game, but not early early game. Uh, many colored colored fruit dove I might lunge for if I have no good forest options in my starting hand. As it, as as is it, I have not yet seen that. Also looking at our goals, um, eggs in wetlands plus cards in hand is pointing me to to build up the wetlands at some point, um, or at least making me lean that direction. Of course, these goals are the same for the other players, so they may be m more aggressive about snapping up wetlands birds on the display. Not that there are any right now, but yeah, we'll just keep that in mind. Beak pointing left is kind of a toss up. Um, and then uh, bull nests, uh, uh, birds with bull nests with eggs in them, that's not too hard to hit, depending on, well, again, the nature of the birds that we get. All right, it is our turn. All right, starting hand. Um, chipping Sparrow, fantastic, because we can play that in the forest and therefore we get egg generation in the forest, which is extremely strong um the common loon might actually be a thing um inca dove is later game red-eyed vireo it's kind of awkward because you need to have eggs in in you know to begin with in order for this to really work properly but it is a star nest um i am tempted to grab the common loon Hmm. I mean, a red, the red-eyed Vireo to Chipping Sparrow would not be a bad thing, but it would make me take one in it. Hang on, let me see what my, my goals are. Um, in any one habitat per color power. Oh. Actually, this kind of makes the Vireo a little bit more enticing here. So we play the, this is going to be really awkward. We play the loon for two food. We're going to need to get a, an extra food along the way. This is that, that, that would require two inefficient actions. Unless we play the sparrow first and then we just save the vireo for a third for it. Yeah. You know what? That actually kind of works. So I'm okay with that. Uh, so in this case, we're going to grab a fish. We're going to grab a worm um, and that will let us get the sparrow and the loon down. The sparrow can be our egg generation so we can neglect the uh, grasslands a little bit. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll take a ethologist, ethologist. 
and try to get different colors birds in the uh, in the forest. Okay, I think we're good. I'm just double checking to see if I want the others. Not to mention Chipping Sparrow, Bull Nest Bird, Vireo, Star Nest Bird. Useful for two of our goals. Not so much with the... Um, actually, the Common Loon is the one that has beaks pointing. That's the only card that has beaks pointing in both directions because it's got a baby on its back. Um, but two of ours are, are pretty good. So interestingly, the orange player um, went with four birds, one food, one fish. They might go, they might be, lun although yeah, they might be lunging for the fruit dove. Now we're just waiting for the third player. The Eastern Imperial Eagle if nobody snaps that up, I might grab that in a in a in a hot minute. I might actually lead with the common loon, um, and then do a card draw so it's not it's not an empty inefficient one, um, and grab the eagle, maybe even the partridge too. Although that's getting a little greedy, because again, those are expensive birds. Probably at least the eagle, because we're not going to be taking a lot of egg actions because we have our chipping sparrow. Um, but we do still want to put birds in the grasslands, just not ones that have brown power. So definitely the eagle, because that's just a point bomb. Because that's seven points, and if we do the triple tuck... Um, that is three more points. That's a 10 point bomb. Also, it gives us a white, uh, a, 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 a blank power uh, for the uh, grassland. So because it, our, our thing is in any, any one habitat. So if we get a bunch of forest birds that are you know, what, what, between the forest or one of these others, we're going to want to build up something uh, like lots of brown powers. Because, um, yeah, getting one of each power color is not great for the action that you're going to want to take primarily. All right, I'll be back once it's my turn. Okay, orange player has drawn birds. Which did, What did they lunge for? They lunged for the, the eagle. Uh, I kind of saw that. Purple Martin's an interesting one, but I'm not not interesting enough to lunge for. But that is going to be a 10 point bomb that we're we're going to have to face off against at some point. We're going to need to get this going. Um, I mean, the Purple Martin is great. Um, more for the wetlands than for the grasslands. But I don't want to build up too many of these birds. I do want to get the common loon down so that we can, I can, I can lunge, I can more efficiently lunge for cards. Um, common loon. Loon chicks spend the majority of their first week of life riding on a parent's back. And of course, we always have the option to not activate this, meaning that uh, we can make sure it doesn't, you know, if it's not going to benefit us, um, then we can make sure it doesn't benefit anyone. I will want to keep an eye out for whatever my next uh, uh, forest bird is. And I need to, to I need to pick a lane for what's going to be my, my primary engine. I mean, Purple Martin's not bad if we're going to go card engine. The loon kind of is, though. <laughs> it also only has one egg spot, I just noticed. So maybe not the strongest play, but I didn't feel strongly enough about the Purple Martin to make a lunge for it. Okay, our turn. Uh, Pied build Greb and goes for another naked bird action. What is this guy doing? Ooh, we have a Eurasian Collar Dove. Okay. Um, trying to remember what was the bird. 
that was there. But no, no matter. Uh, the Eurasian collared dove is going to be our our engine. So we need to get a food engine established. Toot sweet. Oh, they went for the uh, the berry picker one, which actually works really well for us. Um, so yeah, we're gonna grab the collared dove. Do I go rando? I think I should in the hopes, because I'm not going card engine. So the purple Martin Dilly doesn't do much for us. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I'm glad I did that. Um, Player with the fewest water birds. No, we're not giving you an extra card. Skip that power. Yeah, this is going to be our win con. Yeah, tuck from the deck, so we don't need to get card draw. We just need to get food generation. And I'm kind of, I kind of hope that the that that guy plays the uh, or gal, I don't know, um, that they play the the uh, the berry bird and start farming out berries to everybody. Eastern Phoebe is also a distinct possibility. Well, one thing is I can get the Vireo into the nut hatch. Um, I might actually make the grasslands power our um, bird color habit or bird habitat color variant, and just get uh, you know get get a clear power in the in there, maybe a brown power, um, maybe a gold power. Go build up there because I need I need the forest to be in my actual engine. Bell's Vireo is an interesting pick um, for the grasslands because it is a, a clear power, um, which helps build that up. And m learning what bonus cards you're aiming for earlier is a good thing. Also, I don't think I'm going to get this Eurasian Collar Dove down in the first round, so we're not going to get its power firing off there. But I do want to have it down and firing uh, for the next three. Um, and they took it. <laughs> they took it. All right. Um, whooping crane, eh? Uh, a little, little pricey. All right. Let's, let's carry on with building our engine up. We got to get this chipping sparrow down. Chipping sparrow. These sparrows generally feed on open ground, but near trees. And actually, if I'm the... Am I the only one with a forest bird? Yes, I am, which means I can efficiently take two nectar. Uh, now, granted, somebody can grab one nectar, but I, if, if uh, that's, that's blowing a whole action just to get one food, a naked food action. Um, if I can get two, two nectar and get an egg, I can then do the Vireo into Nuthatch play and have a really strong forest going into round two. Now, he will still need to play a, um, a fourth bird in order to actually start getting a higher base value of the food tokens. That's where the, the rework and the rebalance of, of these go. But by making my engine forest, I will have more opportunities to take nectar um, and thus build up my nectar scores for endgame scoring. I just realized I'm going to need to get two eggs if I'm going to make this one work because I need one for this bird, one for that bird. Um, so I might go for the collar dove and then take an egg action. We'll see. California quail is talking to me too. That can also be played in the forest and that's two eggs. Every time we take the forest action, I know it's expensive, but we're going to be doing that. So actually, I might divert and pick up the quail and maybe the crane. Blythe's hornbill. I don't think we have the appropriate nest for that. I mean, we have a star nest. 
The theory, but yeah, the theory only has two on it. All right, yeah, we're taking the quail and then probably a rando. Huh. Okay. That actually kind of works out. Um, all right, what's the water bird situation? You have one, you have none, which mean you would benefit, which means we say no thank you. Yeah, we're not getting a lot of like raw food generation going on in here. Also, I really, really do want to make sure I get these two nectars. Because that will... Actually, the two nectars would let us get the... Hmm, I need, I need to... T hmm, this is, this is a little tricky. Because I need some eggs. Well, two nectars would just let me get the... Um, Eurasian collared dove, and then we can we can savanna sparrow into another um, savanna bird later in the game when getting our egg generation is not so bad. Now you remind me, you don't have yeah, you don't have any forest birds yet. You're just pure picking birds. We also do. I mean, we are since we are going to be getting our. Um, our win con down round one, um, getting a few stray pieces of food would not be a bad thing, though I don't want to I don't want to slow my roll uh, just to pick up extra food to cash it in. In the early game, you need to turn that food into birds. It's only late game when you can more efficiently pick up lots and lots of food that um, you need to worry about that. Ooh. Free worm? Don't mind if I do. That makes our uh, grassland action viable. So we're going to pick up two nectar. Doesn't matter because we're going to be burning this egg. So this is going to let us play two birds. Um, the, uh, the sparrow and then the collared dove. Um, and then we can go after some food. Again, I don't actually know if we're going to utilize that. Cause, all right, so what's our alternative now that we have this extra worm? Um, and two nectar. If we go, so we have three, if we do the Vireo, we can then get the Nuthatch down um, and still have a worm for the quail later on. No, but then we need two eggs. That's why we need to make that our Savannah action. That makes sense. And if we pick, if we happen to in generating some more eggs and generating some more food, pick up some junk um, actions, then or junk junk food, then we can just dump it onto the collared dove. Like if the bird feeder is not kind to us. And yeah, I'm I'm very confident in making the savanna our our habitat because I really need this to be lots of of brown powers. I'm even half tempted to not play the Vireo at all. I mean, hell, I could dump the California quail on here right now and get two eggs plus food. Do I want to dump the, the, because we still have, we still have our our sparrow collared dove play. I don't want the collared dove down just yet. Uh, we don't want the vireo. The nut hatch is nice, but not. You can't use those seeds. So you know what? F it. We're 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 quail in here. Thanks. 
So we'll use the chipping sparrow to dump one egg on our loon. Um, that way we have at least something on the board for the eggs in water nests. Um, I don't have any uh, illusion that that's going to win me those points, but at least I'm on the board and I'll get something in theory, depending on what the other players are doing. But yeah, now I can confidently take food and um, I mean, we could even dump the Vireo for a third food. Because again, I want I want my forest action to be super duper strong. And hey, if somebody is foolish enough to give me some extra food, um, like a, another freebie worm, the nut hatch is going right down there. Because that'll get me points too. Even if I can't use them, it's still gonna be it's still gonna be powerful. Ooh, a once between turn birds. Ooh. Yeah, and it's a bull nest. Yeah, I kind of want the Eastern Kingbird. Because, yeah, that's another color for the Ethologist. And it gets me more food, which my dove is going to be able to make use of. And we want to get this down sooner rather than later. So I think we grab the king bird, then we take food. Even if it doesn't get us a ton of food, it's another power, so it's worth two more. And it's a bowl nest, which gives us uh, a little bit more oomph for this. I know we're dumping the Vireo, but I think it's... Yeah, the Hermit Thrush, not, no, not going to do the Hermit Thrush. Never mind, Orange took it. This lets us turn rats into that, but doesn't actually generate food for us. So, yeah, we, we carry on with our plans. Um, all right, so... The Collared Dove Sparrow, uh, we need seeds and the Sparrow, so we, we need a seed and a worm from this, the, from this take. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dump the Vireo just yet. I mean, I could, I could use that to get another, um, another worm actually. Yeah, let me do that. So we get, we take seed, we take worm, we take worm. Lay an egg. Lay an egg. Yeah, we'll wait for the in-between rounds to refresh the head, the heads up. And then, yeah, we'll get the, uh, we'll get the nut hatch down before we take another thing of food. There is nectar on the table, but it's the end of the round, so we don't actually want the nectar. But we do need berries, so, um, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll get the nut hatch down either way. And then, yeah, when we play the, the, uh, the nut hatch, we use the egg on the quail so that we keep the egg down on our loon. Okay, gain food, laid eggs. Fair enough. Yeah, they took that anyway, so. We get the nut hatch down. Red breasted nut hatch. These Okay, so um Yeah, we we our one egg did get us a point. So that is that's a good thing. Oh, and we get to go first. Um Let's see what we have here. Um, gain. Ooh, American Red Start's really good for our, our engine. Uh, also a once between turns. Ooh, that's actually fantastic. Yeah, I know exactly what we want. Um, who has water birds? 
You've got three water birds. Um, and you've got one, which means you would get an extra card. I might, I might take that deal. And it's another bull nest too. Yeah, good, good burn fodder. All right, we do need to make sure we get the collar dove down. Otherwise, its efficacy is going to be limited. But we do need to get more food as well. Luckily, we've got oodles canoodles of egg laying. Plus, we have um, a random rat here uh, from the Australian night jar. And yeah, this will be an actual forest bird that gives us actual extra food. And even if it's you know, not exactly what we want, it still can feed the dove. Now we are going to need two eggs, so we need to take another food action. Not that we can afford this bird anyway. A food action is in our future regardless. And we can, we can if, if the bird feeder looks good, we can burn um, the Squawk O'Hara to lunge for an extra piece of food. Probably not with this take, though. It's unfortunate that we don't have berries or nectar available. Because berries slash nectar is exactly what we need. So yeah, the bird feeder is actually not that friendly to us right now. I will probably take the rat for the owl, just so that we can get that on the field. We'll probably go Savannah Sparrow Owl as our next play, because we do have something for that. Oh, well, there goes that. Um, I might just hit the reroll and see if we can't get some nectar. All right, my next uh, priority with the Chipping Sparrow is to get an egg in every bull nest uh, in anticipation for round three. Beautiful. All right, we have some nectar to play with. Well, we have a nectar to play with, which is good enough for me. Um, we do still need... So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take food, we're going to take a nectar, we're going to take a worm, we're going to burn the heron, reroll, and take the nectar. And you get your own egg because you are a bull nest. That is fantastic. So the two nectar that we have need to be used for you need to be used for the berries here. But we are having good good egg generation now that playing birds is not going to be an issue. I do want to get this owlet down next turn just to maximize the the income from it. We'll make sure we get our um, collared dove down soon enough. But we have five rounds to do it. All right, extra worm. Fantastic. That actually works out fantastically for me. All right, now we go down here. Savannah Sparrow, no, you are absolutely not eating my nectar. Savannah Sparrow. This sparrow is named after both Savannah, Georgia and Sandwich Sound, Alaska. All 
and uh, we'll burn the egg from the loon now that we don't need it anymore. Australian Owlet Nightjar. And then we have just enough eggs to play our red start. Then we can take the forest action, get a bunch of food, two more eggs, uh, and then we, we should have enough to get the uh, collared dove down. And then we can just take food, food, and just force feed the dove. And then maybe if we have time, we can we can take a peek down here. Um, a, a stray brown power would not be a bad thing, although I wouldn't mind it being on a bird worth a bit more because we're not really going to be taking. I mean, this would be a, something we would do as a one-time thing, which might not be a bad thing. So yeah, maybe take the kite. And then the only other color left um, would be a gold color, which, I mean, you don't need to get that down till the end of the game. Nice. Free food. Paying off already. Okay. Oh, Sacred Kingfisher. Yeah, this guy's gonna be eaten for free off of me, but not much I can do. Yeah, I can see he's trying to completely neglect the, uh, the forest, which is fine. You gain food. You just have the Kingbird. Uh, you're gonna get food off of me too. That's okay. Yeah, we go red start. And then, yeah, we have exactly what we need for the collared dove food-wise. We just need to lay some eggs. American Red Star. Red Starts get their name from the Old English word stort, meaning tail. I, will like to I would like to take the extra um, nectar here, at least one extra nectar, so we can get nectar played in um, the plains. But we need to be cognizant that this is probably going to be... Hee <laughs> hee, free food. And lots of nectar now. And I think this, w I can still take nectar, although it's not going to give us extra. If anything, I can just dump it in the d dove. But I do want to get at least, well, there's one nectar left over for me. I'll take the one nectar. We roll. I mean, I do want to take, make sure we take the nectar away from them. So I might just take. Take the base food for these. Lay you on there. Ah, oh, I love a good efficient food action. And yeah, we should be able to max out our, um, yeah, we can exactly max out our dove even after spending the food to play it. And then depending on what the face up looks like, I might um, circle down and actually I might grab, we have two actions before the end of this. It does, as long as we play the dove by the final action, it doesn't matter. So um, I might, I might circle down and grab the kite. Plus one other rando. Plains Wanderer would be really good, but it's another uh, blank power.
And again, the kite is something like we take one eggs action, like at the end of the game, we get the rat, we give it three eggs. It's really strong as a one time activate. So I'm willing to do it for that. Okay. Um, so um, if we're going to be taking cards, let's take a look at, so you've got three, you still have the one. But you also have a billion cards in hand. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll activate the loon. But we want the kite. We want the wanderer just to get it off of people's, uh, and also give us the option later. Yeah, that's a, that's fodder. All right, now we definitely need to get the collared dove down. Okay, let's uh, let's drop a bomb, shall we? Eurasian collared dove, making it happen. Yeah, and we got to spend our nectar. And this egg will come from the quail. Eurasian collared dove. In Greek myth, this mournful sounding bird was once a servant who complained about her wages. And actually, we have more than enough food to feed the dove and have some left over. I will probably leave myself with one seed because we have ways of getting free worms. And now, now we're up to six points for Ethologist. Again, max of 10 out of this card, but we're already, I mean, six points out of a single bonus card is about, you know, six or seven is usually about as good as you can get. There are a few that you can go crazy with, um, but anything above six is gravy. And obviously if we can get another one, again, I'm, I'm debating whether or not to just cap it at, because if we, if we do a black shoulder kite, that brings it to eight. Um, we have to depend on getting a gold card to get the 10th. Otherwise, dropping a Plains Wanderer and then picking the, the, the best card out of the bunch for that would still be pretty darn good. So that's the backup one. Great Teal. Great Teal is our, is our burn fodder. All right. Activate our Dove. One, two, one, two, one. Five freebies. And yeah, we lost out on that one. We weren't really in the running for it. That's okay. Um, what is our new face-ups? <laughs> oh, if I can get the wood duck, um, the forest becomes a one-stop shop for me. I don't even need to go down here to draw cards which actually would be really good. I would be surprised since I'm going last in this round, I would be surprised if the wood duck survives. But if it does, then it's mine. All right, free worm, I'll take that. And it looks like the wood duck survived, which means we take that. Um, you still have the one. Also, I need to be cognizant. Do I need to... Yeah, you got the, the key and the eagle. I can feed you another card. Because I want more cards for myself. But yeah, we want the wood duck. Um, not no to the black, blue bird. Cockatiel, eh? Oh, interesting. I mean, there's not much room for it. It would have been an interesting bird, but... Ooh, okay. That I might be willing to play.
And since we didn't get any gold cards, I think I am going to be playing the Plains Wanderer as my fifth Plains Bird. If we get a, if we get around to it again, the pri the the primary thing is making sure we turn food into five uh, tucked cards for the dove each round. Also, we need to get eggs into nests. Uh, also, we need to play the wood duck. But we need more eggs for that, so we need to take a food action before we can maximize our forest action here. And we can burn one of the, the um, birds that we don't want. When we take this food action, we can get the fourth food dice. Okay, so let's... Um, yeah, I do think it is worth burning one extra card uh, that we don't want to play uh, for this last one, because soon we won't be able to um, because we're going to be playing the duck. Uh, the duck requires um, two grain and a berry. Um, we can get the rat for the stork. And or the, the kite. And yes, please, for the nectar. Could grab a fish. Which would allow us to drop the stork down pretty, pretty convincingly. And besides, it'll make them pick a food before the reroll. Oh, well, never mind. Um, we need... Yeah, we'll do more, more, more grain. Now we are going to sacrifice one of the eggs here, but we'll make sure that we get every bull nest covered. One, two, who else has bull nests? Only the two. Yeah, I did, I did get, that was the one downside to getting rid of the Vireo, but we'll make sure those two have eggs in it so we're at least somewhat competitive. But yeah, we can drop the duck, we can drop the stork. Actually, I might drop the stork first. Because we're, there's not a lot of competition in the wetlands for... There's not a lot of competition in the wetlands for nectar. Uh, so I'd rather drop the nectar in the wetlands. Or maybe just drop a nectar in the wetlands. Because we do want to save one for the duck. Oh, never mind. We can drop both nectar in the wetlands because we got a berry. Um, I would rather do nectar, nectar, fish. And we will spend an egg on the quail. Wood stork. The wood stork was removed from the U.S. endangered species list in 2014. Um... 30 or less that is just not quite enough to get us over the hump birds with a tuck power is just one I mean we could do this would give us two extra but then the plains wanders yeah we'll see If we go tuck power, it's card of its grain too. I 
this yeah and that's not even guaranteed you know what we're gonna go with the tuck power one because that is that's a potential for four Still doesn't change my wood duck play, mind you. But now we are solidly in the nectar lead in the wetlands. Not sure if we're going to get the lead in the grasslands, but that's okay. I don't want to spread myself too thin. We also need to make sure we, ha we build up enough excess. So I think we play the wood duck uh, all right, that's one way to get excess. I mean, you want to keep feeding me food, that's fine. All right, they gave me a free worm too, so this is making my job nice and easy. All right, let us not delay any further. We play the wood duck. And then we take two more um, actions here to get an egg on both of our bull nests. Yeah, we already have the five food that we need. It almost seems wasteful to play the cockatiel because it only costs one. Um, but the wood duck, as we take actions, the wood duck's gonna let us cycle through more cards and potentially see juicier things. Potentially a gold card uh, for the middle here. Potentially a better brown power card for the middle here. And since the last objective is cards in hand, having leftovers in the hand is not, strictly speaking, wasteful. But yeah, since we only have the two bull nests, we can keep hammering away at the forest. Especially since that gives us four plus one five food per action. So yeah, we're gonna be swimming in this stuff. Which I mean would allow us to activate the cockatiel in good faith and still have enough for the for the dove. But I I wouldn't mind a, a, a bigger, beefier uh, bird that cost more. Okay, our turn. American Woodcock and Egg. So you're going for just pure bird value here, which makes sense. All right, we, we proceed as planned. We're gonna go hunting for nectar, so I'm just gonna take whatever allows us to get the rerolls. Because we know we can feed the nectar to um, To the, um, the, the 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 bird, the pigeon, whatever. Okay. Um. So, question: Do we want Swainson's hawk? It's mm, slightly better because it's base five. Let's go digging. Nope. Nope. And then, yeah, that thing is useless to me. Yeah, and we do need to take food again. All right, food from the bird feeder, don't mind if I do. Oh, it's not my turn yet. All right, more free food. I think they they realize the strategy that like all right, I'm already so ready, so much, so glutted with food that you know it, giving me free food is no uh, no consequence here. All right, now you're actually playing more here. All right, uh, yeah, we do one more food action here. Yeah, we're not taking the hawk. We're gonna just go digging. 
No. Too little, too late. I cannot, uh, uh, too little, too late, and yeah. Sorry, scaled quail. Yeah. I need big point birds. I think I will be going first in the final round, which means I might get to lunge for something juicy in the reset face-ups, um, if that's how, how it shakes out. And I do hope there's something good there, because I've got all the food in the world to play it. All right, end of round. Time to do your thing. And yes, you can feed the nectar to it before the nectar goes away. Just keep things every all even Steven so that we can afford whatever comes our way. Well, hey, we got second place for that. That's good enough for me. We couldn't have caught that uh, the, the first place for that round either. Okay, we don't get first dibs, we get second dibs. Wrong color. Um, blue throat. Blue throat is what we want. Because that's that's a um, a brown power. It's a high value bird. We have more than enough food to play it. And the, the fact that everyone gets food doesn't really matter. We're not actually going to be taking that action. But will it survive the orange player who loves to snap up high value stuff? We shall see. Looks like it survived. Oh, so we fell into... Our nectar totals are falling behind a little bit. Okay, so we do want to take one more, because we don't take water actions anymore. I, and I want to aggressively go for nectar here. That's not a lot of nectar. Oh, we can roll again. There's no nectar. That's terrible. All right, give me a blue throat. Silver eye, no thank you. But I'll take the blue throat. And now it doesn't really matter where the eggs go. All right, we play the blue throat. We play the plains wanderer because I mean, that's, that's probably a good high value play there. And then maybe we do egg laying actions. Because we've got more than enough. We have more than enough to feed um, our thing. So we really don't need to take any more woodland actions. And we've also got a, a, a decent array of cards in our hand, so. And we can also tailor our last action based on whatever the uh, Plains Wanderer final bonus card is. In hindsight, I should have gone with the other one, the small winged one, because the blue throat would have done that and pushed us over the edge to the higher tier. And we're not playing the cockatoo or cockatiel, so um, we're missing out on the tucked bird bonus. It's still the correct play, but little misplay on my part for not choosing the small winged. 
All right, we're up. No, no, not in the wetlands. We need blue throat here. Blue throat. The species named Svekika comes from the male's colors matching the Swedish flag. And then we will get a max choice plains wanderer here. Unless they some some for some reason swap out and and change up the the heads up display and give us a gold power in there that uh, like a good gold power, that's that's our plan. And then I think we 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 mash uh, lay eggs because we're not we're not getting any more value out of the forest. Um, like we get we get three points every time I take a forest action. One for the cash, two for the, each of the lays, and then maybe a little stronger on the card draw. But here we'd get four. We get four points. Because yeah, getting more food is not so much with the blue throat, which is slightly better. Again, unless there's something really, really good. Or unless our bonus card wants us to play something else um, to, to push us over a threshold. That orange-footed scrub fowl would have done pretty decently for us because we have a f decent amount of cluster nest birds. But there's no room in the forest left. And it is unfortunately forest only. If it was like a forest or plains, I would have grabbed that in a heartbeat and, and made that our, our fifth plains bird. Okay, they did not reset. I think they're just on a egg laying spree. Huh, I've never actually seen the Australian Ibis. That's a not a bad power right there. Okay, so again, the question becomes, or hang on, how many cards do people have in hand? We are in the lead strongly. Sally could still take a, uh, uh, a cards action. In fact, they probably will. Um, and if we're gonna play one more bird, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna punt here. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take one more forest action. I know we don't need the food. Um, but it's not about the food. It's about grabbing possible. Well, we get three points for it one way or the other. Um, so it's not wasted. It, it also reinforces our actions because we get one more net card. And that one more net card might be something that helps us out more than the Plains Wanderer. Because, again, I still really want that gold card. And if not, then we we play the Plains Wanderer at two and then probably take a lay eggs at one. But I'm going to go for nectar where possible just to en enhance our nectar. Jeez. All right. Nope. Eh, it was worth a try. There we go, a little more nectar. Yeah, because none of these are like huge point value birds, so. They're just gonna be there for hand fodder. And now we have two nectar to play our bird um, which will actually let us overtake in the planes for nectar spent. So actually that, that does help us out. Okay, someone did reset the, uh, the board, but nothing, nothing appeared that we cared about. Because this would have been the last time for us to, to greed something. But it, doing that makes no sense now. 
Oh, it's not our turn yet. Never mind. Now it's our turn. Just another, yep, never mind. Still doesn't make any sense. Plains Wanderer. And yes, we use our two nectar. Plains Wanderer. This critically endangered bird is the only species yes. in the family Pedionomidae. We got we got a we got a good one. We got seven points out of that with bird feeder. That was a good play right there. And we have, again, more than enough food. So we're gonna take the uh, lay eggs action because more food is not gonna help us out. Even if we drew a dream bird, we wouldn't have time to play it. Um, and this gives us four points instead of three. And I'm not gonna give other uh, the other players one extra food for any reason. So we will be skipping the blue throat's power. Yeah, eight birds are needed for that, but we got eight. So that's that's perfect. Yeah, my only real whiff here was bird counter for that because we would have gotten, I think, six points. So that's four points we left on the table from that bad decision. We will see if I, if I pay for that. Uh, or not. I think this is also going to be the only time in the entire game I'm taking the lay eggs action. We're still head on birds. I mean, they could take a... Uh... You've drawn birds. You played a great egret. So, all right, great egret. You have one. You have one card in here. You have four bonus cards, though. Hot, hot dang! And look at these. These are these are some big. Oh, great egret and a night heron. So they're not jockeying for the most cards in hand. They are just dropping point bombs. That's going to be tough. Uh, you have two cards in hand. Oh, because you're going for a tuck engine. So I don't need to worry about the final goal. We're just going to lay some eggs. Skip it. I mean, that is going to be kind of hard to, to play against, those uh, birds of that magnitude. I am not 100% sure if we're going to actually clinch this one or not. Because, I mean, we have a lot of food on the table, and all of this means nothing after, besides the five that I can, I can feed my dove. Which, again, will be fed. And he beats me in that. Huh. I must have misread the hand. All right, so we're second place in the forest for nectar. We did take first place in the planes for nectar, which is good. We need we need the nectar points. Yeah, for, for a forest engine, we didn't do as well with nectar. I think I blame that on the draws. All right, we're going to get kicked our butt kicked in this first category. Birds amount on cards because damn. Not as badly as I thought though. This one this guy has four bonus cards. Not all right. We didn't do great with end of round bonus. Um, we had, we were the only one with eggs. Yeah. 
Wow, that was a good game. Sweet. All right, folks. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. So until next time, it's been Pinstar signing out. See ya. We'll be right back.